Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Lately, I've been using three different controllers. The first is this one here, the 8-Bit Doe Xbox controller. Typically, I use this when I'm testing PC games. I like the fact that it's wired, and it also obviously works on the Xbox. But unfortunately, it doesn't work on Botocera. For that one, I use this B-Top controller. This one is also wired and works great on both Emulek and Botocera. On top of that, it has a nice retro feel to it. It has a really good D-pad and face buttons. Unfortunately, it doesn't have analog triggers, but I typically won't use this controller for games that require that anyway. And then finally, when I just want to test something really quick, I actually have been using this tiny little Zero Two from 8 as well. This thing is, I think, maybe 20, 30 bucks, and it's just super cute and easy to pair. And so those are the three that I typically will use. So today we're going to check out a new controller that I think might actually replace all three of these. And that is this one here. It is called the King Kong 2 Pro Controller from a company called Gully Kit. And I actually have no idea if I'm saying that correctly. Either way, this is an Xbox style controller that has a ton of versatility when it comes to the control scheme and also some really nice quality of life features. A really good D-pad, hall sensor analog sticks as well as analog triggers, and just overall a really professional feel. And I'd heard good things about this controller and so when the company reached out and asked if they could send a review unit, I said sure, let's check it out. And so, without any further delay, let's actually check it out. Okay, and so this is what the box looks like here. And this one actually came via Amazon. I think it retails for about $70 altogether. Inside it does come with a USB-C cable which can be used for both charging as well as wired connection. Also inside is a sticker, a catalog of some of the other things that they offer. And then a pretty robust instruction manual. I'm not going to get into the details right here and now, but I will say that everything I needed to have answered was available here. We'll look at it a little bit more in detail here later in the video. Now, interestingly enough, they actually ship this with its own case, which I think is kind of cool for two reasons. One, it's nice to have a case for your controller in case you want to just throw it in a bag. But secondly, I like the fact that there is no other packaging within the box. And that's kind of a cool eco-friendly move that we're not having to throw away a bunch of plastic. But yeah, here's the controller here. It reminds me a lot of an Xbox controller, but it does have some metal accents which make it pretty nice too. The whole device is covered in a rubber coating and on the back here it does have some grippiness to it as well. I'm always a big fan of having that texture on the back of a controllers like this, and so that's a big win for me. The front of the controller has more of a smooth rubber feel to it, which feels nice now, but I do worry whether or not it's going to age over time. Now the stars of the show are the hall sensor analog sticks here. These use a magnetic connection, which means that they aren't ever going to have any stick drift. In fact, this is actually the exact same technology used in the INEO Next. And these two companies actually worked together when they were setting up the INEO Next, and that's why they look so similar. And if you've watched my INEO Next review video, you know that these are my favorite analog sticks available on a retro handheld. They're just super smooth and very responsive. And it's the exact same experience with this device here. My only criticism is the actual texture of the analog sticks themselves. I just wish it was a little bit bumpier and easier to grip. But overall, I think the overall feel just can't be beat. Now let's check out the D-pad, and surprisingly this one is really nice too. It has a nice classic retro feel to it, it has a good amount of travel, it pivots really nicely, and it feels nice and tight too. These are the three qualities that I value most in a D-pad, and it knocks all three out of the park. Of course, the stick layout isn't going to be very good for retro gaming, the fact that the D-pad is so low down compared to the face buttons. So it may not be perfect for primary retro gaming, but it's still going to work in a pinch. Now let's look at the face buttons. These remind me a lot of a PS5's face buttons altogether. They're not quite as rounded as they are in the Xbox, a little bit more flat. In the center, we have our typical Nintendo Switch style buttons, your start and select, as well as your screenshot and home buttons. And these all have a rubber membrane connection, so they have a squishy response to them. They're not actually clicky. And it feels really nice. Also in the center, you have a settings cog for various functions, as well as a macro button here on the bottom center too. Yeah, I would say overall, the control scheme on this is pretty dang good. Finally, let's talk about these shoulders and triggers. The bumpers themselves actually feel a lot like an Xbox controller's. I would say they're a little bit easier to press down on than on an Xbox. And the triggers are a little bit different as well. They seem to have a ski ramp that's a little bit more angled than they are in an Xbox. And because it's a little bit longer and more angled, it feels very natural to rest my index fingers up there. So again, actually no complaints about the control scheme on it. One thing I did observe is that it does feel relatively lightweight. As you can see here, 222 grams altogether. Compare that to an Xbox Series controller like this one here at 295 grams, it is quite a bit lighter. In fact, it's just about lighter than everything else. Here's an Xbox One controller, 
PS5 controller. We're just going to kind of go down in descending order here. Here's the Nintendo Switch controller, getting kind of close to that 222, but not quite there yet. And then the 8-Bit Do Pro is just about there. In fact, the only one that is lighter is the PS4 controller. So I think that's a good measuring stick right there. It's a little bit heavier than the PS4 controller, but not by much. In general, all the buttons feel absolutely great. I actually have no issues altogether. So let's do some comparisons against other controllers so you can get a better feel of how good this one works. The Xbox Series controller has a little bit more rounded buttons, and I think at the end of the day I actually prefer the roundedness on these just because they seem to stick out of the shell a little bit more easily. Now the triggers on the King Kong 2 Pro are a little bit more flared than on the Series controller, which gives them a little bit more travel, which is something I actually prefer. And like I said, the face buttons are quite flatter, more like a PlayStation controller. Now let's do some D-pad comparisons. Like I mentioned, this one has good pivot and travel. Compare that to the Xbox Series controller, which is just this clicky garbage here. And even the Xbox One controller had a lot of click to it and also not a lot of travel either. I think the King Kong 2 Pro is much better in that regard. Now another comparison here would be the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. This one has a pretty good D-pad, but to me it feels a little bit too loose. But the main reason why I don't actually really like this controller is because the analog sticks to me are just way too loose altogether. And on top of that, I think that this controller is just a little bit flat and wide. By comparison, the King Kong 2 Pro just feels a lot more compact because it's angled in a little bit more and just has a more rounded feel. I can access all the buttons, no problem here. Honestly, if you've ever held a modern Xbox controller, you're going to know what you're getting into. Altogether, no complaints about the controls here. So now let's actually pair it up to some devices and see how this works. You have your mode button on the left here, which you just kind of hold down for a moment to toggle between your different input selections. So I'm going to select Android here, and then you have your pairing button on the right. You just hold this for a couple seconds, and then it'll kind of do this connecting thing. From there, you just want to connect it to whatever device you want to connect to. We'll start with Android, but the setup would be the same for iOS as well. And so here we are playing Dead Cells on Android, and the connection is nice and fast. Personally, I did not detect any sort of input delay whatsoever. I tried out a couple different emulators with my phone here, and as you can see, the results are just great. And as I mentioned before, no discernible input lag. And so after I connected to my phone, I was like, let's just try everything and see how it all connects. So next I tried the Ambernic RG503. Now this is running the stock operating system still, which does have support for Bluetooth external controllers. And so you could use the HDMI out function on this and plug it into a TV and you'd be set with a nice little mini console. And so moving on, I decided to test it with the Steam Deck as well, and this one worked great too. Now obviously I wouldn't recommend using an external controller when in handheld mode like this, but if you had a USB-C to HDMI output, you could hook this up to a TV or a monitor and then use the controller instead of the Steam Deck itself. Now the controller is also fully compatible with Nintendo Switch. Here's my Nintendo Switch OLED, and as you can see, it's working great. And on top of that, the gyro controls work really well too. Now the controller is actually capable of adding aim assist for things that are not Nintendo Switch, so you could add it to PC and stuff like that. And it has instructions in their manual on how to set that up. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of gyro controls, but it's always nice to see these functions are enabled. And another test I like to do with Nintendo Switch in particular is whether or not the controller can wake the device up. This will be really great when it's in docked mode. And as you can see here, you press the home button and it does connect to the device. So given the fact that this doesn't have stick drift and it has gyro and can wake from home, this will be a really great Nintendo Switch controller. So now let's try it out with wireless PC gaming. I'm going to move this over to X input mode and then next I'll put it into pairing mode and then connect it to this PC. And it worked fine right out of the gate. It actually gets detected like an Xbox controller so all the inputs are going to be the same. Now it is a little bit odd because the A, B, and X, Y actual button configurations are swapped. They're Nintendo style, not Xbox style. And so you're not actually going to want to look at the controller while you're playing. It's actually going to mess you up. But when it comes to actually playing it, you know, no problem here. In general, I would just say it feels a lot like using an Xbox controller. And much like with Android and Nintendo Switch, the Bluetooth connection was nice and strong. But the thing is, I actually really like to use wired controllers. And so I did read that this one does work with wired connections. So let's try that out next. First thing I did is I unpaired it from Bluetooth so that way it wouldn't connect to my PC accidentally. And then I just plugged it right into the PC and it immediately detected the device and worked just fine. Again, with Xbox controller inputs. And so here I am playing Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo using RetroArch and it feels just just great. 
Everything is nice and responsive, but like I mentioned before, it's not quite a perfect setup for retro gaming. The fact that the D-pad is on the bottom like this is just not quite as natural as it would be with something with a D-pad on top. And so while the D-pad does feel very nice and the face buttons are nice and responsive and the wired connection does work really well, I wouldn't say this is a perfect retro gaming controller just by virtue of that control scheme. Now, in addition to what I've shown, there are some other features and settings available in this controller. Like I mentioned, there is an aim assist that you can set up, and you can also adjust the dead zone, the trigger sensitivity, as well as the analog stick sensitivity too. And you can do all these things directly on the controller without having to rely on a secondary app. On top of that, there are other functions like a turbo button, as well as the ability to swap out the A, B, and X, Y inputs. There are four different levels of rumble that you can adjust. I found that the default one works the best, and then finally, like I mentioned earlier in the video, there is a macro function. You can actually record up to 10 minutes of movements and then have that run. That's not really a function I would ever use, but it is there if you want it. Another thing that's kind of interesting about this controller that I didn't notice initially is the fact that as you angle this in the light, it actually gives a purplish reflection in the metal components. It's kind of a neat little touch. I'm not sure if that was a happy accident, but I really appreciate it. It does make the controller kind of unique, but it also makes me wish that the face buttons lit up as well. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this controller. It does a lot of the things that I would want a controller to do. Number one, it has a wired connection. This is a really important seller for me because I don't like having to pair everything with Bluetooth as I'm testing new devices. Number two, I love the fact that it works on the PC, no problem. Number three, it works on Emulek and Botticera. Four, it works really well as a Switch device. And then finally, five, it works well with both Android and iOS too. So in that sense, it's almost a jack of all trades. There are a couple consoles that won't work with this controller, for example, Xbox and PS5, but just about everything else works well. And it's very easy to pair it to various devices using the nice labels here. And it's kind of cool that it charges the device as you're playing it wired too. So for my summary, I usually do what I like and don't like, but honestly, there's not a lot I don't like about this device. So instead, I'll talk about what I like and then some of the things I'd love to see in the next version of this controller. In terms of what I like, I think it's the perfect size. It feels like an Xbox controller, just nice and compact. I love the hall sensors for the analog sticks and the triggers. The fact that they have a magnetic connection means we won't have to deal with stick drift in the future. And that connection gives you a true analog input. The D-pad and the face buttons are really good. They're not perfect by any means, but altogether no complaints other than the placement of the D-pad when it comes specifically to retro gaming. It's kind of a lose-lose situation with a controller like this. It really is gonna depend on what you wanna use the controller for. Overall, I think it's really easy to configure the controller. I like the fact that it has labels on the top to know specifically specifically what you're going to connect to. And then the instruction manual answered all the other questions I had about the configuration. And finally, it's a really small thing, but I like the fact that they used an eco-friendly packaging when it came to the plastic case that comes with the controller. They could have just filled that up with a bunch of plastic that you'd throw away anyway, but I think it's super cool that it's actually a case instead. For the next version, these are the things I'd like to see. Number one, I think it would be a lot better if it was a little bit heavier. I think around 290 grams would have been perfect. And if they had added that weight along the edges of the controller, I think it would have been really nice and balanced. I also think it would be pretty cool if it had Xbox and PlayStation compatibility. I know there are all sorts of licensing issues and it would drive up the cost, but I'd be happy to pay that difference. I also think it would be nice to have an RGB lighting option. You know, you don't have to have it on all the time, but it would be nice to turn it on if you like it. And in that same regard, it would be cool if you could actually change the lettering on the face buttons. The current A, B, and XY setup is great for Nintendo Switch, but it does get a little bit confusing if you were to use it for PC gaming. And this is really just a kind of hope and a prayer, but it would be really cool if it had different lettering that you could change using maybe some LED labels on the buttons themselves. And finally, another thing that would be really nice is to have interchangeable thumbsticks. You know, on the Elite series of Xbox controllers, you can like pull them off and put on new ones that are maybe a little bit taller or have a different grip to them. And I think that would be a really nice bonus as well. Again, it's probably gonna drive up the cost of the controller, but I personally wouldn't mind paying that little extra premium to have something that's gonna last for many years to come. So yeah, that's my review of this controller here. Altogether, I have very minor complaints. In general, I'm actually very happy with how this all turned out. Out. It's got a decent deep pad, it's got really nice analog sticks and triggers, and I think it has some really great connectivity. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a controller that you would consider picking up? Or does your current collection of controllers satisfy you in general? Personally, given the fact that I have something like 20 controllers already, I'm not sure if I would have picked this one up myself, but now that I have it in my collection, I can see it replacing about a half dozen of the ones I already have. And to me, that's some pretty big praise. 
So I'll leave some links to the controller down below if you want to read more about it. And as always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.